emergency 911. A friend of ours is bleeding in our house. Who was the person that stabbed him? Investigators, forensics experts, two crime jocks. Nobody has seen anything like this one. Robert Juan decided to spend the night with three friends. We have their story that an intruder broke in, and Robert was stabbed three times. One, two, three. Bang. The story just took off from there. That was a clip from Who Killed Robert Juan, a documentary revisiting one of the most infamous murder mysteries in D.C. Police were left with more questions than answers after that 2006 murder of D.C. attorney Robert Juan on Swan Street in DuPont Circle. Director Jared P. Scott joins us now to fill in some of the blanks and what to expect in this true crime. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. I'm curious, at least in your documentaries in the past have been all over the map, right? And you've done environmental issues. You've done just about anything you can think of. What drew you to this story? Yeah, one of the themes throughout my work has been uh, this idea of injustice. And, you know, this is an unsolved case. Justice has not, uh, uh, has, has not come to pass for, for Robert or his, his family or his friends. And so, you know, one of the, the main reasons we go out and make uh, a story like this is we try, to, we try to advocate for the victim here. We have someone who had a tragic death. And that the, the, no one has been held accountable for that death. And if we can tell a great story that's perplexing and chilling and 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 brings the viewers in then maybe someone will that'll get enough attention to the story where someone will come forward and maybe they saw something maybe they heard something that night and we can get a tip or or a clue that might bring us closer to uh for finding justice for robert for viewers who have been around for a minute uh, they'll remember this this story clearly i mean we covered this extensively happened back in 2006 again on swan street and dupont circle uh, as a matter of fact in that clip right there you just heard one of our our former reporters who was part of the documentary i know you used some of our footage uh, and some of the coverage uh, to put this together uh, but but how do you how do you take this and i guess sell it to a, a national or a global audience what do you use as some of the key points here as takeaways well, I mean, anyone who was in the D.C. area who knows about this case, you said, you know, you said it, Paul Wagner, former uh, Fox 5, um, you know, uh, reporter, the Washingtonian, the Blade, uh, this, this got a lot of attention in Washington, D.C., and it never really became this national story. So, you know, it, it's now when I talk to people or people that see the show, they, most people that, that haven't been in the D.C. area say, how, how have I never heard about this before? And that's, that's what we're trying to do with the stories, bring it to a larger audience. So when we worked with Peacock and Jupiter Entertainment, the idea is how can we take this story that somehow, somehow is this giant story nationally in D.C. and inject that into the bloodstream of the current moment across the country and hopefully into the world. And again, I think the idea is the more eyeballs that get on this, the more people that watch this. And it is a, it's a fascinating story that you know, someone might come forward and, you know, we might get closer to finding uh, justice for Robert. You know, when you look at a lot of uh, true crime stories that are out there, a lot of times uh, they have the finality already. We're just retelling the story, right? When you have a story like this where you didn't get that finality, whether it be by the criminal court system, uh, you did have some civil cases that were, that were you know, put to bed because of this. Um, does that make it easier or tougher to tell the story? You know, as storytellers, uh, you know, we, we try to, it's, it's like solving a puzzle. And, and this is one of the, the most perplexing, you know, chilling and baffling puzzles I've come across. So we knew, we never thought we were going to solve this. Um, you know, as we just were going to, we were just going to lay bare this story in a way that hopefully has, you know, hadn't been done before. Again, you know, we, we can arrange information. We can bring a cinematic, uh, you know, kind of, uh, the augmentation to it, you know, with with graphics, with with beautiful music, um, all of these, you know, people love stories. And again, I think as opposed to reading this uh, in, in the newspaper and and hearing about it, um, you know, through other means, you know, if you can watch this and, and bring audiences in through the, the power of storytelling and people love murder mysteries, then again, I think um, this gets us it gets us that step, you know, one step closer to solving this case. You know, there although this was a, a murder trial, Sorry, although this was a murder case, it was not a murder trial. And therefore, again, no one's been held accountable for this. So it is interesting to tell a story that, about, that is about a mysterious and tragic murder, but not actually be able to solve that murder. But again, I think that our job as storytellers is to lay that out and allow audiences to, to get immersed in that. And again, hopefully someone comes forward. We're going to have to wrap this up, but I'm curious what you, what you think is that one puzzle piece that is missing. Is it really like how did he get to that? Why was he at the house in the first place? Is it something more than that? What stood out to you? I think no matter what you think, there's so many twists and turns, and I, I urge your viewers to go watch this on Peacock, but it is, it's anything that you think may have happened had to have happened in the 79-minute window from when Robert uh, arrived and to when the 911 was called. And that's the most baffling thing, because there are so many different possibilities and so many twists and turns within those 79 minutes. And that's what always baffles me to this day.
Well, listen, we look forward to checking it out. It, for some of us, revisiting the case and for others, seeing it for the very first time with fresh eyes. Appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you so very much and best wishes with the doc and uh, many more.